In July of 2013, authorities from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts announced they'd be testing biological evidence found on a blanket at the last murder scene of the Boston Stranglings from 1964. Nearly 50 years later, Albert DeSavo's DNA was scientifically linked to the last victim, finally closing the case on one of 13 murders that had an air of mystery surrounding it for nearly half a century. But before there was DNA testing, there was my grandfather, Detective Phil Dina Tao. My area in the Back Bay area, known as the Bon Ton Division, myself and my other detectives who were on nights knew the Back Bay area like the back of our hand. Phil was a knuckle and heel detective pounding doors with his knuckles and grinding his heels on the pavement. And when the case of the Boston Strangler put him right in the middle of one of this country's most notorious murder sprees, he went from beat cop to working on an elite task force in the state house under a group of eager politicians. Although Phil was the driving force as to why the powers that be came to know and believe De Savile was the Strangler, a conviction was lost in the political crosshairs, leaving my grandfather to his own devices to tell his story as to why his biggest case was officially unsolved. This is the untold story of the Boston Strangler by Philip J. Green the Cowboy. It began on June 14th of 1962, Anne Slesser's murder. This murder was the turning point, the greatest turning point, and the greatest thrill of my life. Now, 50 years later, his family reassembles his reservoir of documents to help cement Phil's story in the court of public opinion, showing how the investigators on the case had it right all along, even without the aid of DNA.